Good morning, everybody. In the years before the Civil War, which began in 1861, there were many dramatic moments, and one of those happened on this date, October 16, in 1859, when John Brown and some others tried to take over the federal arsenal in Harper's Ferry, Virginia. When the British surrendered to us at Yorktown, here's the painting of that, one thing we had learned during the war was that we needed our own weapons manufacturing industry. So Congress authorized two locations, Springfield, Mass. in the north, Harper's Ferry, Virginia in the south, for an arsenal and an armory where guns are made and stored. So the southern place, Harper's Ferry, pictured here, is where John Brown wanted to capture guns and give those to slaves to start a slave uprising. We had bought the midsection of the country from the French in 1803, known as the Louisiana Purchase, and that included what is today's state of Kansas, and that's a big part of our story. In 1820, Congress passed the Missouri Compromise, which allowed Missouri to enter the Union as a slave state, but it prohibited slavery from that blue area, which included Kansas. Our country kept expanding. We defeated the Mexicans in the Mexican War in 1848, and as more and more land is added to the country, the question of should new land be slave or free kept coming up. So in 1854, Congress passed the Kansas-Nebraska Act, which basically repealed the Missouri Compromise and allowed slavery to potentially exist in what were known as the Nebraska and Kansas territories. So if people there wanted slavery, it would be allowed, and that really upset anti-slavery people. So John Brown was born in Torrington, Connecticut. His house isn't there anymore. He grew up in a very religious family, almost a Puritan family, and felt that God spoke to him directly. And at one point believed that God told him that he must eliminate the evil of slavery, and that became his life quest. So meanwhile in Kansas, people are moving in to affect the vote on whether it be slave or free, and here's Lawrence, Kansas, an anti-slavery town that was attacked by pro-slavery people, and people were killed. And John Brown reacted by going to Kansas, and at Potawatomi Creek, he and his group slaughtered pro-slavery people. So bleeding Kansas is what the area is known, and John Brown is part of that. So Harper's Ferry is in the upper left in the circle. That's where the arsenal slash armory was Washington DC to the lower right and one of the parts of the drama is how quickly can troops get up from Washington to resist John Brown. So here's a view of the arsenal slash armory where the Shenandoah and Potomac rivers come together. John Brown and the guys uh, attacked it. They were going to get weapons to try to hand out to slaves but everything went wrong. It's really quite a story, lots of detail, but eventually the army did come up from Washington. John Brown and his group retreated to the firehouse where they were attacked, uh, captured, and the fellow leading the U.S. military was Robert E. Lee, who at this point is wearing the blue uniform of the United States Army. So John Brown was tried by the state of Virginia, found guilty, uh, eventually executed, and this famous painting is probably a little bit off because civilians would not have been allowed that close to the courthouse. So Harper's Ferry today is worth a visit, kind of a picturesque setting. Very little is left of our story though because of flooding over the years and during the Civil War it was occupied by both armies, so a lot of the buildings are gone, but the firehouse is still there where they were captured and it's really worth a visit. There's a, a walking tour you can you can take. And if you're ever up near Lake Placid, New York in the Adirondacks, go south to North Elba where John Brown is buried. Here's his grave. And reflect upon this guy who had such a dramatic impact right before the Civil War.